This is a tutorial on using Keras and TensorFlow to train a deep learning neural network with multiple layers. So we're going to start with uh, an application here. We're going to need a couple packages like NumPy, Pandas, sklearn, Keras, and then matplotlib. And I'm just going to run this one in Windows subsystem for Linux. But you can use any Python distribution you'd like. That's Python with with the current versions of Keras and TensorFlow. You can't use Python 3.7, the latest version, but you can use Python 3.6 and uh, to 3.4. So I'm gonna just gonna verify what Python version I have, and that's 3.5.2. And then we're gonna need packages such as uh, sklearn. So if I do pip3 install sklearn and user, and it says that's already satisfied. But let's go ahead and do the same thing, but instead of sklearn, let's go ahead and do Keras and get that uh, started. And then just as that is collecting and downloading, uh, you know, it's going to need some other dependent packages as well. Um, and it'll go through and install all of those for us. We're also going to need TensorFlow as well, so if it doesn't install it, um, go ahead and get the underlying TensorFlow. Okay, and that'll collect it and uh, install it for us. But while this is going, let's go ahead and just over, have, give an overview of what is deep learning. It's a neural network, but it has multiple layers. Okay, so we're going to add multiple layers here and maybe multiple neurons. You can see as we add this, you can see the weights here. Um, and those are the parameters, the unknown parameters that we're going to be adjusting to fit either for regression or classification. So classification is going to be, you know, is this a cat or a dog or is it a one or a zero? And we're going to try to use characteristics of what we're looking at. Um, to fit this, you can see it's not doing a very good job here. Uh, we may need you know, additional neurons um, for fitting our function. And then once we have sufficient structure, then we're able to get a good classification with that data uh, and with the neural network. Okay, we can also go to regression. Now this one is a little bit different. We're not just saying, is it a cat or a dog? But we might be predicting what is the temperature tomorrow. So it's a continuous function. It's not just a one or a zero that we're predicting. It is a continuous function that we're trying to generate a regression for. Okay, and so here you can see this uh, loss function. So it's almost a perfect fit here. Uh, that's our objective function. Uh, and, and so here we have different uh, activation functions as well. We can use a rectified linear unit, a hyperbolic tangent, a sigmoid, or a linear. Uh, I'll go back to rectified linear unit. We can change the learning rate as well, maybe increase it a little bit. And the epics are like the iterations that we go through. Those are the number of adjustments that we're making to the weights. Um, and so you can see this is a uh, very high weight right here. These are very small. Okay, and these are the two output uh, neurons that are contributing then to this final uh, prediction for the regression. Okay, so that's uh, just a, a brief overview of what we're doing with these neural networks. We can add additional layers, um, add additional neurons. As you add more uh, structure to this, that just means that you have more weights that you have to adjust to try to fit the data. Uh, but it can also, if you if you have something that's uh, you know has too many weights and you train it for too long, you can also have overfitting. Okay, so the the application that we're going to be doing is uh, this one. We're going to be fitting this sine of x, and here are the data points that we generated from that. The blue data points. And you can see as the number of epics increase, uh, as the number of iterations, we get this uh, fitting to the data. But you can also see the extrapolation is poor. So you want to verify as a first step that you have data for the regions where you're trying to predict. Okay, we're going to go through a couple steps in uh, in creating this this neural network. 
and uh, walk through this uh, source code together. It's still installing the, the TensorFlow. Here, I'll just let that go for a little bit longer. But let's go ahead and just build this. And um, we're gonna, first of all, just generate our data. And so this is just gonna be an X between zero and two pi with 20 data points. And I'll just say my Y is gonna be the sine of X. I'll just uh, save this training data to a file so we can use it for a next step. We wouldn't really need to save it to a file, but just for the purpose of being able to import a file and manipulate that, um, I'll go ahead and save it with NumPy with the save TXT and uh, have a comma delimited. Okay, then we'll generate some test data. So there's our training data, and then we also need to separate out some test data. Uh, you know, this might be 20% of the data that you have um, that where you're going to uh, test it. Uh, now, in this case, I did 100 points um, just because it's easy to just compute some more. I'm going to save that. So I have my training data and then my test data set. And those ideally want to be independent, uh, but there are some other methods you can use if you're limited on data and you need to use the same data uh, for testing and training. Okay, the very first step, and this is one that a lot of people don't uh, do or forget about, is to scale your data between zero and one. So for this, we're gonna load the data with pandas. I'll load the training data, and then also load the test data. So that's gonna be train data frame and test data frame. We're gonna read in those uh, text files, and then we'll scale the value to zero to one for the artificial neural network, the deep learning uh, application that we're gonna use here. So we're gonna create a new min-max scalar and we're gonna go between zero and one and then we're gonna scale the training and the test data. So the very first thing is we wanna use the fit transform, the s.fit transform to generate the min and the range that we're gonna to use to scale and then we're gonna apply that same transform to the test data frame. So we don't wanna use different scaling, we wanna use the same scaling. And so in the first one we use fit underscore transform and the second one we use transform. Okay, now I'm just gonna print the scaling multipliers and then the scalar minimum as well. Okay, so let's um, convert scaled values uh, back to the data frame Okay, and then we'll save those to additional CSV files. So for each of these sections where you see, you know, these uh, hash signs, uh, the comments, um, the, we're just going to save some, uh, save our files so we can then run these independently if we wanted to. Okay, now we have training of the model. We're going to create our neural network model, and we're going to create a new sequential model and we're gonna add a layer. Now this is gonna be an activation function which is linear, input dimension one, and it's gonna be a dense uh, neural network. Okay, just like we showed on that uh, web page overview. And then we're gonna add uh, another linear layer. And then, let me make this just a little bit bigger so you can see it. Okay, and then we're gonna add a hyperbolic tangent, but you could also do a uh, rectified linear unit as well. Okay, so we're gonna add different layers here. Here's gonna be uh, some additional linear units as well. And then we then create the, uh, we compile the model with a loss function. That's our objective function. We're gonna try to minimize the mean squared error. And we're gonna use the optimizer atom for this one. Okay, now we want to load uh, some tr the training data. Okay, so we started over on this new section. I'm just having these be independent, so I'm going to load this these scaled data back in, and then make my input my x one. I'm going to use my data frame, and I'm going to drop the y value. Okay, and then just ha take the values of that, and then from y one, I'm just going to use the y column for that data. Okay, so X is going to be my input and Y is going to be my output. And then I want to train the model. So I'm going to use model.fit. So this is like the equivalent of pressing that play button. And this is the number of epics that I'm going to use. Um, now I could probably increase the learning rate 
to get that to go faster. I have verbose equals zero, but if you shift that to two, then you're gonna see uh, the loss function at uh, for every epic. Okay, and I set shuffle to true. Sometimes that helps if you mix up the data uh, so you don't get kind of repeated uh, uh, data or uh, it just helps with the fitting. Okay, now you can also optionally, I'm gonna comment this out, but this is, you can save the model to the hard disk. Uh, you can, after you fit it, you can save it, and I'm going to save it as a .h5 file. Okay, now we want to test our model. So if you had saved it before, you can load the model. So I'm going to, I have that commented out. I'm not going to do that here. Uh, but you can load the test data as well, where you want to uh, try to predict. That's already scaled for us, as we did in a prior step. And then again, just like we did before, um, you know, up here we had x1 and y1, where we just separate those into x, uh, in this case x2 and y2 for the predictions. And we're going to test the model. We're going to use model.evaluate. So before we use model.fit, now this will give us a mean squared error. Okay, so we're just evaluating how well the model is predicting over this other data set where we didn't use it for training. And then we'll print the mean squared error. Okay, a final step is let's go ahead and see how this predicts, not only in the training region, but also outside the training region. So now we're going to use the predict function. So I'm just going to generate some additional data between negative 2 pi and 4 pi with 100 data points. Okay, and uh, so this would be equivalent of like deploying your neural network your deep learned uh, learning model uh, and you want to be able to get um, you know predictions ideally you wouldn't want to predict outside the training region but we're just going to see how it it does okay so we're going to scale the input and you could either use the functions that you had from SK learn to transform the s dot transform or you can apply the scaling yourself there's the min and then the scale Okay, so we're just going to apply that uh, to x3 to transform it from x to x3 in uh, 0 to 1. And then we're going to predict, based on x3, we're going to predict this new y3p. Okay, and then we'll unscale the output. So just like we scaled it coming in, we're going to unscale it coming out using, uh, you know, not the zeroth ones, but the, uh, the first ones here and the a min and scale that it generated for us from sklearn. And then we'll just plot it. Okay, so this is could be the uh, you know the unscaled x1 values, the unscaled y1 values. And those are training data set. Our actual data, our actual function is the original one. That's going to be the red line. And let me just go down so we can uh, see what this is generating. Okay, so there it is, um, and let's see, I'm going to come down here, just uh, save the figure, the results.png, and then show. Okay, so th here's our, our uh, script. If you want to get this script, you can just come to the uh, website here. You can take each section and just make sure you select the get code down here, um, or you can come all the way down to the bottom. If you just want to, um, you know, get the the whole script, go through it, uh, and explain it. Just uh, select the show all Keras example code, and then go all the way down to the bottom, and select the get code, and then you can copy that. Do a Control A or select all, and then copy it, and then uh, you know use that as your test. Okay, there's the source address. I'll put that in the comments of the video as well so that you can get it. Okay, so here it is on my desktop. Now what I want to do is just go ahead and run that. Looks like it successfully installed TensorFlow and any of the dependent packages. But let's just see if there are any uh, additional surprises here. So I'm just going to change directory uh, to my desktop. Okay, so there it is right there. And if I do python3 nn.py, then it is going to, okay, so it looks like I don't have pandas either. 
Okay, let me get pandas. Uh, so every time you run this the first time, you're always going to have packages that you're going to be missing. And so just, uh, you know, pip install those and uh, and then, you know, try again. And then you might be missing another packages package. Uh, so I'm going to uh, just wait for pandas to install and then we will, okay, there it's almost ready. It's uh, downloading this and then it will install it for us. You can also do upgrade if you want to. Upgrade is a way to uh, you know upgrade your package if you're using a prior version. Okay, so um, let's see, it's almost done. We've got these, you had to get you know Python detail, PyTZ. Okay, and it's installing those right now. Okay, so now Pandas is installed, and we'll try it one more time to run this. And you'll see it's using the TensorFlow backend. It can use an additional one as well. It can use others. Okay, so look, here is matplotlib. Okay, so just if you're missing any of these, um, just go ahead and install them. I'll go ahead and pause it one more time. Okay, so it's installing the rest of matplotlib with some of the other dependent packages. And then uh, once that finishes, we'll go ahead and run it uh, one more time and see if we can get this to produce our intermediate uh, files here. We'll look at some of those as well as, uh, as well as our final plot. Okay, so there it is again. And again, TensorFlow backend. And we'll see the scalars. And it says, it has this, uh, your CPU supports instructions. This TensorFlow binary was not compiled to use. Okay, it gives us our mean squared errors. And then also our results that you can see right here. Okay, so let's look at some of these files that we had. Here is our training data set that it produced. Uh, this was the, these should just be the, the minimal number of points. Okay, the 20 points that we had with the X's and the Y's. And you could see that um, these are not scaled. This goes between zero and six point and, and two pi. Okay, but if we have the training scaled, this is what it looks like when we uh, scale the data. Okay, so it's gonna scale it to a maximum of one and a minimum of zero. And same with the X as well. Okay, so there's our training data. And, uh, and it just uses these uh, these data files right here, okay, to, um, you know, for each of the steps. We didn't have to create those, but it just shows us as a checkpoint along the way what it's doing. Okay, so that's it for this, uh, this tutorial. I'll just share with you some additional, okay, some additional content that is here on the course website, the Dynamic Optimization course website. Uh, this one you can find here at the deep learning link. Okay, and there's also at the end of this, if you want to go down further, you can see exercise with Python Gecko. It's a package that we've produced that does uh, it's maybe a little bit more flexible uh, than uh, Keras or TensorFlow. It allows different types of activation functions and also differential and algebraic equations with mixed integer capability as well. So there's a a Python Gecko uh, source there it repeats the same example, but with uh, Python uh, Gecko. And then there's also some additional machine learning uh, with this Arduino Arduino Lab, okay, where you can generate real data. And we're going to have some, uh, you know, different solutions here that will go into the the different methods for modeling you can use more of a first principles approach here to model this or you can use a neural network to model this uh, dynamic response we're going to be using recurrent neural networks and other types of machine learning methods to be able to describe time series data